Hello and welcome to ET Auto. Today we have Manu Sale, MD and CEO of Mercedes-Benz Research and Development India to give us insight into Mercedes-Benz Research and Development on future of mobility and the technology roadmap. Welcome to the show, sir. Japan show, so happy to talk to you again. Thank you very much for inviting me for this call. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. Uh, First of all, I would like to understand MBRDI's key contribution in last 26 year of journey in India. Thanks, Dipanshu. Um, yeah, you're right. We we started 1996 uh, here in India, headquartered in Bangalore with an office in Pune. Uh, we have been now the largest R&D center for Mercedes um, outside of Germany uh, and a very important hub for uh, auto development as well. The span of activities at MBRDI ranges from mechanical engineering, digital mechanical engineering at its best, uh, all the way up to software and IT that the car needs uh, right now. So there's been a lot of progress uh, in the world of auto development. And uh, thankfully, auto development has also uh, kind of gone digital um, completely over the last year. So the digital twin that actually gets developed in parallel to the physical car uh, at headquarters or other locations in the world uh, is largely supported out of uh, India and the Indian engineering uh, base that we have. Um, it's turned into an innovation hub for us in many ways, and we are uh, contributing in all the cutting edge areas of technology uh, towards Mercedes-Benz engineering mainly. Okay. I remember uh, in one of our conversations, you told that there is uh, Mercedes India in every global product portfolio of Mercedes-Benz. Uh, how's the contribution uh, was there since, since last year? And what? how do you see in the next five years? How much more do you want to contribute in terms of the product development globally? That's a fantastic question. And you touched uh, my emotional nerve with that tagline. The, the actual tagline says, uh, there's a little bit of India in every Mercedes, right? Uh, we mean India R&D in every Mercedes. And all of my team here aspires sooner or later to get a tagline that says there's a huge part of India in every Mercedes. Um, that's the pride with which uh, India R&D and IT are actually contributing to the product. But coming back to your question, um, with the increasing software content in the car and with the increasing dependence on the digital twin that we are developing for the car, Dipanshu, the content from India for the car will only increase in the next year. So this is like a trend that has been coming up in the last about four or five years. We'll connect the dots uh, during the call in some way, because if you look at the need for having a digital twin meanwhile in the industry, and Mercedes really is at the forefront of doing that. If you see the software defined vehicle that the car has become meanwhile, we'll talk about that as well a little later. If you see our aspirations, to work from chip to cloud in what we call as MBOS architecture. Some more details of that as well later. If you connect these three dots, Dipanshu, there's going to be way more India content simply because the talent for doing all of this is sitting right here in India for us. The next four or five years, as you've been following the industry from ET Auto, you know that we're going to see increased levels of automated driving around the world. You see the regulatory approaches from various countries that is allowing um, such kind of uh, releases meanwhile. You're going to see 5G rollouts probably around the world and therefore hyper-connected cars and the need for more software-driven head units and the possibilities for both front and rear seat uh, to be software-driven in terms of customer functions. Uh, so we spoke about, uh, you know, uh, ADAS in some ways, automated driving in some ways. We spoke about connectivity in some ways. And last but not the least, Dipanshu, the commitment to be 100% electric uh, in markets where it allows. And we're also excited about the launches that are coming up in India. You can clearly see the three big areas with push, with thrust uh, for us as Mercedes-Benz are all software driven, electronics driven. And right. this is the solid reason why I believe that there's going to be even more India content. And our focus from, from India is clearly cut out uh, right. in terms of how we can contribute to our global ambitions. Right. You touched upon software defined vehicles and, you know, for the larger uh, audience understanding. So if you talk about future of mobility, you know, and if you try to decode it, there are multiple trends that are, you know, impacting the auto industry from EVs to connected to autonomous and now, you know, increasing content of software. 
how do you see the technology roadmap going forward particularly for mobility industry and especially if we talk about luxury segment and then it comes trickle down to the mass segment uh, your viewpoint it's a very exciting roadmap uh, in fact i can add two more layers to what you said it's um, deep tech as well within the car there's so much of artificial intelligence that we are going to rely on going ahead within the car um, that the car is really turning into a a device with really deep technology uh, focus and now with the availability of uh, electronics uh, for automotive grade electronics um, with capabilities never seen before i think the technology roadmap for a car is very clear if you want to achieve carbon neutrality by 2030 for us as a company and you're going to rely on 100% electric mobility and you want to take both charging and range as core themes within them this is for mm -hmm. is for for the uh, core you know transmission and for the core combustion of the car uh, powering of the car i think software driven themes that we are uh, coming with mm -hmm. um with ai and the possibility to put edge devices within the car which we already showed uh, already in some of our vehicles in the form of gesture control and so on all the way from glc to the eqs you can see gesture just a driven features within a mercedes um the panchu the tech of a car is kind of evolved further evolving and some of the latest high tech that you see deep tech that you see outside the car is already kind of functional within the car and we are more coming there so on one hand on the other hand the amount of data that a car streams back to its cloud is also enabling both the end use but also us as a company to be able to kind of you know predict functionality improve functionality and efficiency of the car to an absolutely next level so things that you talk about normally for our regular you know viewers here things that you talk about normally outside of the car outside of the automobile industry as deep tech is also now within the automobile industry as deep tech we are talking a lot of about technology in terms of software deep uh, deep tech and you know connected uh you also mentioned about the software side of things uh i would like to understand about the talent pool in india from you and how do you see the talent in india is contributing to the global product portfolio as well as what are the challenges you are facing to attract talent at mbrdi one of the big reasons why we are invested in india is actually the talent pool right uh, we are wishing a bigger and a broader market share for our products here too but right now the biggest reason why we are invested in india is because india has so much to offer in terms of engineering talent both on the it side but also on the r and d side electronics mechanical material science the whole nine yards we're going to continue to kind of trust india and invest in india right now for the sole reason that mm. india has unending possibilities when it comes to engineering talent for us mm. um this is now a 26 year dependence and i see decades more of dependence on the talent you and i know that we are blessed with demography like no one else in the world has young people you and i know that uh, the indian student and academia is so well kind of positioned to not just produce volumes in terms of engineering talent but also quality with the tier 1 premier institutes that we have and this dipanch is the base on which we are working so I don't I don't say directly that we have challenges to get talent in India for Mercedes we are blessed with a brand uh, and a use case right now a purpose statement you know when i speak to both people at academia or during senior management interviews about our purpose statement that we want to make the world's most desirable cars the world's most desirable cars actually you know kind of makes you so excited to say that you know i want to be part of that team that's number 1 number 2 I think um the fact that Mercedes Benz invented the car in 1886 and right now as mobility is going through reinvention of sorts with all the that we spoke about electric drive forever autonomous like never before hyper connectivity like never before to be part of this journey somehow as an automotive professional as a software professional as an electronics or a mechanical engineer is just too exciting right and I hope I can share that excitement you know close to three decades in the industry i am excited still about being part of this transformation that's going on in the mobility sector i right. think these are these are use cases that you never miss if you talk about it 
you know, in the academia or in an interview circle, I can see engineers getting really excited to be part of this. Let's talk a little generic now about the industry in general, um, automotive or non-automotive. I'm also part of the NASCOM ERD circle and you know, often have discussions. We'll admit that we do have a challenge to find a big volume of quality talent that we need right. uh, in the country. Uh, but I'm also very happy at the same time that the academia is reaching out actively to the industry to bridge the gap, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now with autonomy all around, I think so many of the universities reach out actively to us, but also to the others in the network, trying to kind of assess the gap between what is being taught and what the industry needs. Right. So the gap is getting smaller and smaller. If we continue in this path, I really think India will continue to produce talent that is really ready uh, for the industry. Right. But you'll hear this all around us. Companies that are in India are here because the talent equation is just too, mm -hmm. too let's say, attractive for all of us. So I would like to now ask them. I'm an optimist. I, I, I'm an optimist. So I'll continue to stay invested in India for that one reason, because yes. it's just attractive as a proposition yeah on contrary you know many automakers are you know outsourcing their technologies especially the software part because they are not able to retain talent what i have been hearing from many ctos around uh but now i come back to the very basic questions you know since you're working on the global products as well for mercedes-benz on the larger portfolio and you know uh there are times you know uh the products launch in western world uh they take time to come to india like a year or so uh, a minimum i guess and uh, you know, and you have been working for that like three, four years back. So, what kind of future features we can see in cars, and what can how software can define that? Could you please throw some lights? You know, we can actually visualize how a future car could look like in next four, five years. It would be EV. It would be a lot of software inside. We can change things. How how it would be? But actually, if you followed uh, Mercedes Benz's latest, let's say, show car concepts, right? Um, I think um, I remember speaking to you the last time, but for our viewers, let's go back to mentioning EQXX and the thousand plus kilometer drive that we did in Europe with a single charge, converting the car to a machine that is so efficient, an electric car that's so efficient that it takes the range anxiety completely out of you. And Bangalore had a chance to contribute to that show car, right? So when the drive happened live between Stuttgart and the south of France, um, engineers from India were also kind of hooked on uh, supporting people with the expertise uh, that they were asked to and proud to be part of uh, that association as well. So uh, if you if you go back to the three verticals we spoke about, uh, engineers from India are already contributing and the peak that we gave you, sneak peek that we gave you when we brought EQXX to Bangalore, showed you, to your question, showed you where electric drives are headed in terms of efficiency, right? Uh, the single purpose I think that we are working on right now is to make mobility carbon neutral at the same time, take out the range anxiety completely from the user. Right, this is uh, one aspect. Um, right now, we're working on autonomous driving and we have contributed to all the level three releases in the world, um, both in Europe and in the US. And there are more locations in the US that you will hear from soon as announcements, which are from a regulatory perspective, authorizing level two plus or level three driving. And engineers from India are involved in all of that uh, right now. And uh, the latest in deep tech that we saw was both at CES in Las Vegas when the releases happened, um, all the AI that is in the car, camera-based intelligence that's in the car is coming out of India for us. So for a peak, I would say in all the three big verticals of transformation that we have, uh, in deep tech, engineers from India are today already involved. Now, some of these are infrastructure based. So the second part of your question, what can we see in India? I think you know some of these are infrastructure based. Uh, automated driving, for example, is so much today a rule based system that we'd have to see slightly higher uh, and more disciplined infrastructure around us to bring these features into it. But um, when I sit in an EQS that is today even manufactured in our plant in Pune, you can get in touch, feel, and drive the latest in, in clean mobility from Mercedes-Benz in India. So, you know, while we have discussed everything about tech, you know, from software, deep tech, and, you know, talent, as well as, you know, how the future of car would look like, but one of the 
key challenge which industry is facing right now and because of all this software content increasing and a lot of things semiconductor shortage you know because of covid happened or whatever whatever the reason is or the demand is high uh how do you see that evolving uh globally in terms of you know availability of semiconductors and changing needs uh, of automotive industry in the next five to seven years we spoke about software defined vehicles so you can easily imagine that cars will depend more and more on semiconductors and software just like your consumer electronics devices do today right now while an s class already contained close to 100 ecus you may ask me to say there are enough electronics already what more are you looking for yeah. i'd say the power of computing that's going within the car is increasing multifold mm-hmm. today if you want to do uh, automated driving at its best and hook on to it the most complex cameras radars and lidars you really need compute power like a gaming engine within the car right and right. the industry is headed towards that so first first answer first part of the answer is the need for electronics is increasing and the kind of semiconductor power compute power that we need in the car is also changing dramatically okay. you see that happening everywhere because the more you put dependence on software just like our home computers have gotten more and more powerful Right. you and i bought the most basic machines 20 years ago uh, today nobody does without a core i5 or an i7 architecture everybody has video to edit at home everybody has something to crunch at home or a trading software that is so complicated that it requires right. just more compute power right similar trend is happening within the auto industry as well so first thing is that we are depending more on semiconductors and software second the kind of chips and chipsets that we are using is getting stronger and more complicated both of these will have a telling effect on the kind of demand the auto industry has on the semiconductor itself no. yes covid did throw a spanner in the works with supply chain issues i think they are largely sorted out meanwhile i don't think you hear a lot about semiconductors out there yes there are one or two cases uh, that do pop up right now but as the world gets a grip on covid and reopens its plants around the world geopolitics could play a role you never know right uh, you and i are also certainly yeah. following up what's going on around the world with geopolitics so yeah. i think we're geared up for a for a uh, software driven and a semiconductor heavy future on one hand but i mm. think covid taught us also quite a lot about supply chain disruptions and how we can build a backup plan so that consumers are not hurt uh, by the sentiments god thank you so much sir for joining us today it was nice interacting with you Always a pleasure to talk to you Dipanshu thank you so much for inviting me again on your show